10,000 years ago, humanity made a huge leap. By moving from the old ways of hunting and gathering to farming, they changed everything. Now, before farming, life was completely different to the civilizations that we know today. Kings, currency, karaoke, canopies, the whole thing started with farming and the civilization it brought. And you wouldn't know it, but today we're standing on the cusp of a revolution in food that is as significant as the revolution that was seen 10,000 years ago. Now, the difference in the revolution today is all about microorganisms. 10,000 years ago, the big thing that changed was that our hunter-gatherer ancestors worked out how to farm macroorganisms. They they turned aurochs into cattle, they turned wild jungle fowl into chickens, and wild boar into pigs. But today, we've unlocked the way to farm microorganisms, and the changes are huge and profound. So how does it work? Well, I'm going to get a PhD microbiologist to explain it to us. Over to you. Thanks. Uh, the technique you're talking about is precision fermentation, and precision fermentation is like brewing, like beer brewing, but then in an advanced matter. So what you do is you take microorganisms like bacteria, yeast, you adapt their DNA uh, to make them produce exactly the compounds you like. Uh, and the thing is, breeding of those microorganisms is quite easy because, you know, uh, bacteria, they uh, replicate very fast. Like you have a new generation in an hour, you can steer their evolution and make them produce exactly one ingredient and exactly one ingredient that you like. So an ingredient from milk or cheese or meat. It is a proven technology. We've been using this already for quite some time. Yes, so precision fermentation is already used to produce two big ingredients worldwide. The first is rennet. That's the kind of stuff that you would normally get or used to get from the stomach of a calf that had to be killed for it. Now 90% of that, which is used in the cheese making process, is already produced by precision fermentation. And when it comes to insulin, that being the thing that diabetics rely on for their treatment, today 99% of that is produced using precision fermentation, whereas in the past, it required an awe-inspiring 50,000 pigs to be slaughtered to produce one kilogram of it. I have another one, citric acid. Citric acid is used as a preservative in a lot of things. If, if you open up the, your cupboard of your kitchen, you find citric acid in like 90% of all the products. Uh, so it used to be produced by lemons and all kinds of citric fruits. But now again, this is produced by microorganisms. So you'd save a lot of trees, you save a lot of land. And now we're on the cusp of seeing almost every single product that you produce using animals today to be produced by precision fermentation. So this is how it will change our food system. It will look like this instead. If you look at the food system at the moment, all the products we eat are like produced in a three way manner. So you have your, we have your animal or your plant, you take ingredients from them and from them there you make your food. You make your pizza, you make your hamburger, you make your salad. Uh, now we take out the animal or the plant out of the equation. We swap them for a microorganism. They make the ingredients and again you make actually kind of the same products. You make of those ingredients again your pizza or your salad or your hamburger. So the end result is the same but what is not the same is the environmental result. Now farming with microorganisms instead of macroorganisms is profoundly profoundly different. Different. And based on the science that we have now, based on the research, it appears that the water use, the land use, and almost every other metric of environmental impact is somewhere between one tenth to one hundredth the impact of farming with animals. Now, the most single important one of those is land use. Today, well, the vast majority of the world's land is dedicated to animal farming. So an amazing 28% of the entire land mass of the planet is just animals grazing or the feed for those animals. But instead of all of that, we could rewild all of it because today with precision fermentation, we could produce the entire world's protein of an area of land the size Greater London. It's can, mad. Can you imagine what, what we can do with the rest of the land now? We can like rewild it or make it into recreation. The world is going to be like, it's going to be perfect. So what do we need to do to make this happen? I think the biggest thing we have to do, we, we have to invest like those innovations, to, they cost money. So we need governments to have like moonshot investments in those techniques and make it happen. Let's do it. Let's ferment the future. Yes.